Hello, welcome to part two of my beginner's guide to Civilization V. I'm playing Pachacuti, or however that's pronounced, um, who has enhanced slinger units instead of archers and can build farms on hills, um, which is an advantage, and also actually some reduced terrain costs and reduced maintenance costs. So there you go. Every, every civilization has some bonuses. Okay, continue your journey, says that button at the bottom. It's off the screen because I'm uh, I'm playing in a windowed display rather than full screen so that I can record it at a suitable resolution for YouTube. But that involves trimming off the bottom of the screen slightly. Uh, the stuff at the bottom is not so important. See, there's nothing much there most of the time, but uh, if, it, if it's necessary, I'll pull it up into view. The stuff at the top here is what's more useful, which is your money and happiness and things of this sort. Well, let's carry on and let's see what we're doing here. The point of civilization is to spread your sieve around a bit and either conquer the world or have a highly influential culture and get everybody buying your blue jeans and records and stuff. You left click on that, you left click on the target, bang. Okay. And in this case you left click on that and you right click on the target. I don't know why it's different, but there you go. For units it's that and for bombardment it's the other. So, Oh, I have a chariot archer as well. He can do, do a little right, right clicking zap of them as well. Yeah, so much for barbarians. I think I need to send these guys down there, and if I if I can, well, they're out of moves now, but I'll have to send them down there. There's a barbarian camp down here, and it's going to be a nuisance. <sighs> what to build? <coughs> another chariot archer. I'm in profit cash-wise, I can afford it. Getting six a turn, roughly. A surplus. Generating 16 science. I have no trade routes set up. One happiness. I'm generating points towards the Golden Age, which they kind of happen automatically in this game. Golden Age is where you get extra production and stuff of that sort. Because you're in a Golden Age. Generating culture, 9 per turn. When I reach 175, I can adopt another social policy, which is uh, some hopefully advantageous way of running my government. Tourism is kind of like culture, but it's like a negative to other civilizations. There's their tourists come here and spend their money. And faith is another way of earning points. Can't get that. Uh, you guys can explore. You're healthy now. Straight down there again. You can't stack mo units, but they will move through each other. There are certain units which can stack to a limited extent, like when they're individuals, like great generals and people like that. Ooh, I've discovered the Americans. Hooray! Accept my embassy so that politics is a bit easier. The buttons at the bottom here are, are just back and propose. Or in other words, yes and no, so, or no and yes. Thank you. Nothing else. Not 
quite sure why I'm seeing these guys. Have I got somebody nearby? Ooh, lovely. My stupid scout's in the way, but maybe I can do a slinger attack, yes. What technology am I researching at the moment? Iron working. Just wondering if I've got a calendar yet. Oh yes, I have, so I can build a plantation. Go over here somewhere and build a plantation. My other cherry touch, oh, thank you. Now, as usual in this game, there are lots of things I can buy. Uh, lots of strategies I can go and, and uh, adopt. And it's very difficult to know what's right and what isn't. I am going to build a settler. My happiness is low, so this is a bit risky, actually. Because when you found a new city, you generate more unhappiness. And when you have unhappiness, your civilization cannot produce so well. In fact, I think I'll change that because it's a bit, bit risque at the moment. I will instead build a circus to improve my happiness. Costs money, but that's life. I thought these guys hadn't done anything. Was that it? Okay. Right. Oh, it's my scout that's being an idiot. All right. That's why I can see it. Just come down here, man. Out of the flipping way. Oh, rats. They, they repopulate. If you don't get them straight away, it's a real nuisance. Oh, I found Mount Sinai. That increases happiness slightly as well. Excellent. I'm going to move down here and then try a ranged attack. So I can. They're both in a position to walk in here as soon as it's empty. Choose research. <clears throat> and what do I want to do? I have no idea, really. <clears throat> Construction. Some better bowmen, more happiness with the Colosseum. Mm. <clears throat> it will help me expand. And my special ability, the Terrace Farm, as well. Mm, okay. <clears throat> Turns being processed for the other players. My military appears to be uh, one of the worst so far. I don't like that, but it's early days yet. Come on, destroy that camp. Gold. Hooray. Now I should probably stick a city down here somewhere just to, for the sake of blocking these idiots from coming back all the time. Colossus makes more money. Mausoleum. 
Makes more money. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Very good. Settler first. I still need to explore a lot. I think I'm going to send this guy exploring. He's got good movement. He can't move yet. I don't know where I'm going to put him. Maybe here. There's fish there. Fish there. Or there. Hmm. It's not a really great area. But I don't want barbarians spawning there every five minutes. Oh, I have a now, the road has been built so I have a trade connection between these cities which will help my money generation a bit. I think I will start automating these workers. They know what to do pretty much. If you look at the options when you automate workers Automated workers don't replace improvements. Um, if I've been doing manual specialization of the cities by carefully deciding what developments to put into what hex on the map, I don't want the automated workers undoing my special planning. I haven't really been doing that, so I don't need to switch that on. But I do like to have them not remove features like forest, jungle, and marshes, um, except when there's a something special in the in the square, like bananas or something, um, because they provide extra features later in the game, like jungle gives you more science and things like that. Sometimes um, it's worth hanging on to them. I think. Not always, but sometimes. So I'm going to automate him with those settings. And he will go and figure out what to do. Well, the computer will. It's pretty good with it, really. It probably overdevelops things. You may end up with more farms than you need, or sometimes cities end up starving for some reason, but uh, you just have to tweak it a bit when that happens. Can't build the courses, obviously. And somebody's improved their religion. Stay there until you're well. Right. Stay there for the moment. This will stop any barbarians spawning in any of these squares. I should probably move along one just to cover that one as well. Another one up, oh, way up here. Well, I don't care about that at the moment. My trireme is busy exploring. I've discovered Bratislava. another city-state. The city-states are independent players who are not trying to conquer the world. Uh-oh. Barbarians near my city up here. Oh dear. There's always something, isn't there? Oh, but I've built the settler. So let's just get him down here somewhere. Let's get myself another chariot archer. Oh. I'll move him straight up here.
great movement, especially along a road. Other people are building wonders. But I have construction, hooray! That's a wonder, but I don't, it, it's a bit costly because you, you get one of each type of land unit you've got. And of course we have to pay for them. We have to pay maintenance for them. But it can be useful. Oh, they're running away. Horseback riding would be good. I don't know if there's a war coming up or not. There could be. I have more happiness from there. But this lighthouse is very good. Because I do have a, a coastal city. I, if I remember rightly, my capital is on the coast. So let's go for that. Which The lighthouse increases productivity, food and production from sea hexes. Though I only have a small number because it's kind of an inlet. I suppose I've got three at the moment. Still doing him manually, I think I can switch him to automatic as well. I'm going to build a shrine and start generating faith. I'm not getting any faith points at the moment. good to keep your cities garrisoned, it, it assists with, I think it's happiness and productivity, I don't remember exactly, but they, they don't always do so well if you don't have a garrison in there. Happiness, I think, is the main thing. Or, if you like, lack of discontent, because you stomp on them if they're unhappy, or if they're rebellious. found this guy. What a fantastic costume. Huh? Nice, nicely decorated place. All right. Set the embassy. We'll get to, into some diplomacy later, probably. Right now, I'm not that bothered about it. Oh, I can promote this unit. Good against ranged attacks or some defense against them. Good against units in rough terrain. Good against units in open terrain. Well, these guys are in open terrain, so let's improve myself that way and then slaughter them. Oh, excellent. not recommending I build a city here and that's not too surprising because there's nothing much special here um, and anyway these borders will gradually extend however I need one over here and one over there I think I'm gonna build him anyway I can put farms and these hills can be good for productivity. It's going to be like a sort of um, a production city, maybe. Let's 
build a granary, go for growth. In the long term, it's good to get your growth in early. Just go to another place. Strengthen units, you produce stronger units. They have extra experience technically. These are not barbarians, they're the Koreans, but they look pretty similar. The Ethiopians look very similar too. Oh, I can adopt a policy. I can adjust my government a bit. I'm going to adopt all of the features of tradition. Extra happiness, extra productivity, that's cool. When I've got all of tradition, it says I get 15% growth and a free aqueduct in my first four cities. As soon as I've got the technology, I presume. I don't have the technology yet. Now, I'm normally clicking on the next one in the sequence, but I could just click here and it would do the ones necessary to get there. Um, but I'm going to go for horseback riding. Just in case I need it. This exploring is going very slowly, I have to say. I want to know what's around my cities so that I can expand that way. Barbarian boat. Oh, let's sink it. Did it sink? Let's have a look. Not quite. I'm kind of stuck because I can't go through his land here. Let me try some diplomacy. Ooh, I can't do open borders yet. Uh, we don't have civil service. All right, okay. the chariot archer. Somebody else got the money from dispersing that camp, but at least I dispersed it. Well, or they did. We also got the, the kudos from Ife for doing it. It's a bit annoying, but it's a bit crowded around here, clearly.
you can explore. Let's clear up this land a bit. Let's see what the heck's around here. He's not very productive, this city. Songhai is protecting Antwerp. You can do some diplomacy with the city-states and they can become allies and you gain their resources as a result. So they can be useful to deal with them. We'll probably do it a bit later on in the in the in the game. You can focus on it and it's quite a, a good thing to do. There's lots of ways to get through the game of Civ. More happiness. I can probably build another settler. There are lots of ways to win um, and gaining influence with the city-states can help you, but there are different types um, and they give you different benefits according to what they are, whether they're merchant or mercantile states or religious states or, or whatever. They'll give you money or faith or something like that, so that's the way it works. Now he wants to trade horses for spices. I do have spare spices, you see it says two. So I can trade. He doesn't have spare luxury resources, but okay, I could do with some horses, I'm sure. I now have five. I'm using three. So his extra two are actually useful. this unit by spending some money? Yes, I will do so. I have 478 and I'm in profit. Research. Mathematics. Get him away from them. Maybe a wrong move there. I should probably have got him to run away a bit, but still, let's see how it goes. I'm going to increase it. I could heal him, but I'm going to increase his visibility and then ask him to just sit there until he's healed. Hopefully the barbarians won't find him. These are spearmen, which are good against horses. He can't be automated because he just can't get anywhere, I think. This guy's in the way, so he's just going to have to stand there for a moment. Where can I explore? Where should I go? I 
we're going to do a bit of damage to them, I suppose. Whether I'll survive the next turn, I don't know. Great lighthouse. Go for it. It's a wonder. And it's quite quick to build. Do I still have surplus spices? Yes, I do, despite the previous deal. So, uh, yes, I will accept that. I'm now getting four iron. I'm not using any, but I, don't know. I will expect. I'm mostly not looking at these things that are going on on the side because I'm carrying out my own strategy and these are distractions. Um, they can be useful for, for your strategy, especially the dealing with the city-states. Um, and we'll look at that in future turns a bit. And you can bias your entire game towards dealing with city-states and diplomacy and stuff. It, it, there's lots of ways of playing the game. Stay there until you're well. Oh, somebody else has built the great lighthouse. More flipping barbarians, I don't know. Well, what to build? I, I, I maybe need a caravan for some trade, but there are still a lot of barbarians around, or a cargo ship. Let's build a cargo ship. I need to build a settler, don't I? Next turn, if I remember, I'll build a settler after the cargo ship. I don't think I have an aqueduct already, despite the... Oh, I do. Despite the fact that I lack the technology, the game has given me one anyway. It gives me... 40% of food is carried over after a new citizen is born. Without that, the food is used up and there's no surplus. So it speeds up the rate of growth, basically. What's happening here? Come along. Growing very slowly. Off barbarians. Keep exploring. I 
A declaration of friendship. There's no and yes, basically. Um, the idea is that if you've declared friendship, you're unlikely to declare war on them while this declaration is in force, because that would mark you out for much of the rest of the game as dishonest, and other AI players will know not to trust you. <coughs> the penalty is quite severe for breaking such a deal. It also means they're very unlikely to attack me. They might, but they will incur diplomatic penalties against all the other teams in the game. So, my cargo ship, I can now establish a trade route and start making some free money. Well, I can't go very far. I can only go to Ife, but it'll do for now. Let's do it. Off they go. And because I've got this tick box, which just off the screen it there says trade routes, you can see show them or not show them. I don't see any reason not to show them. I'm going to build some... no I'm not, I've got to build a settler, haven't I? Let's get on with it. Oh, next turn again. It's because nothing happened. I was waiting for something to happen. Pesky barbarians again. He's going to have to move. Let's do it before I forget. Settler. Right, I want my settler to come down here somewhere, so let's just send the chariot guy up ahead. Oh, they can go across the water now. Because one of my technologies allowed it. Not quite sure where I want my settler to go. But you can see... Oh, it's recommending somewhere over here. It's quite a way away. Let's get him going in that general direction. And actually these guys should go on ahead and have a look. Some defences. Building a terraced farm, look. Whoa -ho. Lighthouse, I think. More growth. Plus one food and production. Because this city is going slowly. Oh, it's going quickly now. I've got the granary. But still, more. That's what I want. Let's go for something different. Drama and poetry. 
we'll start getting some of the more cultural things happening. Barbarian horsemen now. Whatever next. What's happening to my settler down here? Anything? Wrong. See, they can stack with the settlers. The settlers maybe can move a bit as well. It's recommending probably these at this area because there's things like this around. But I don't know what's under this cloud. It looks like a mountain chain to me. Faster than my flipping horses. Oh, barbarian encampment. I figured there was something up there. Okay, explore. Oh, pesky barbarians. I don't know. They're all over the place. You get a lot of barbarians sometimes. Not much you can do. Just keep smashing them, basically. Concerned that my settler's going so far ahead. Ooh, barbarian up there. No, 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 come down here. Never mind the recommendations, you don't have to do what it suggests. I'll leave the Americans to deal with those guys. Open borders, hooray! It just means it gives me more space to explore and um, better diplomacy with them. The bad news is they can explore my country and see how weak my place is. So if you suspect them of treacherous intent. Don't let them do that.
I'm building a little bit of faith now. I'm not doing anything with it yet because I'm really concentrating on trying to expand, build a few cities and stuff. I can worry about how to win later. Maybe I should be worrying about it now, I don't know. If you're not clear about how you're doing, you can look in here at the demographics. It gives you a rough idea of how you rank. I'm not particularly happy, my people, a, a zero. Soldiers about halfway. Population pretty good. GMP pretty good. So I've got plenty of potential. Population is good. Crop yield is good. There's a lot of potential here. But I need to cheer my people up a bit. And I have the money to do it. These stupid uh, explorers keep going near to the, to, into the barbarian camps. When you automate them, they are, I'm afraid, persistently stupid. I've found a city and increased my unhappiness. Um, nasty. If you get too unhappy, rebels start to appear. Barbarians magically appear in your own country. Get away from them, for goodness sake. Speaking of which, I don't know if that's a rebel or not, but let's blow him up anyway. Production also slows down when your civilization is unhappy. So it's very important to try and keep this green, or the numbers in the uh, positive. I have a load of money. I could actually just buy a granary or a lighthouse. Well, I'm building a granary, so let's buy a lighthouse. Extra visibility, yes. Probably need to build some more workers. The city is looking neglected. It's not growing very quickly. The cows are mean developed here. Stone. Oh, there is a quarry there or something. Or stoneworks or whatever it is. Yes, not terribly happy, but I'm not as bad as that lot.
another worker. And here... Let's build a shrine and purchase a Colosseum. Happiness now zero, at least that's something. Now, what policy shall I have? I have an extra one because I've reached the uh, some the classical era or something like that, medieval even. Patronage enhances the benefits of city-state friendship, makes it easier to influence them. Aesthetics improves my ability to generate culture. Or, honor, good for warfare, liberty. I want to expand some more. I really do. So I'm going to adopt this one. You can mix and match. You can take some of each um, and just develop two or three at once if you want to. So I've got liberty. So I get extra culture in every city, straight away. I'd like to explore around here a bit more. I probably need to send some guys out manually and control it. Um, there's not much point in exploring this mountain range anymore, actually. I can see... Yes, it'd be nice to settle up here, where there are pesky barbarians, or there were barbarians in the way. Maybe these guys will have dealt with them. But clearly I could do with putting a settler up here somewhere. But what is over here? It's not that far from my border after all. He'll give me salt. Spices, I still have a surplus. Salt, when you trade luxury resources, if you trade your last resource, you lose the benefits of it. So with these where, they, where it says one, I can't really trade them, because they will be my last. But you see spices, there's two of them. I can trade some. It says two even when you might have three or four. I don't know. I think it's to do with what you can trade with this guy. Um, that's how I interpret it. And salt, that will give me probably four happiness as an extra luxury resource. So definitely I will go for that. And you see, all up, up from zero to four, straight away. Getting happiness from whales, marble, spices and salt. Automate. Choose production. Very difficult to know. Another worker. I think I think it might be a good idea to churn out a couple of workers. Yeah. They develop your city, as you can see, and help it to grow, help it to produce more.
Ooh, I'm more happy more happiness has come right. Discovered Laza. A religious city state. Oh, one of my scouts has explored some ruins. Lovely. Oh. Well, let's go. I've reached the medieval era. Hooray! Automate you as well. I'm just going to automate them. Alright. Looks like that camp is still there. Let's get some science going, shall we? There's some already, but we can speed it up a bit. What on earth do I need? I don't know. I'm doing okay for money at the moment, so I don't really need to con construct trading posts and things. Civil service will allow open borders arrangements. Mutually, which I got from the Americans. I guess they have it already. I'm not doing much in terms of faith. That can be useful. As we shall see. Right, I'm going to stop there. That's the end of part two. So I shall save the game. And hopefully we'll see how this goes in part three. Bye for now.